All right, so today is Friday, January 17th, and this is how I make a suspenseful intro to show the progress for this week. I have gotten the engine mounted, as well as the canopy. Um, I showed last week kind of the process of getting the canopy prepared. Uh, I put it on and took it off maybe three or four times to make sure everything was aligned just right along the, uh, they call it the joggle, and all the way up and around. Um, so the top skin solution was uh, not a big deal. I just drilled out the mismatched holes with first the eighth inch drill bit, the 3.2 millimeter drill bit, kind of trying to meet in the middle of the misalignment and then uh, upsizing it to four millimeters. And it took out, you know, all the, the oval from the hole, cleared it out and it riveted together nice and strong. Um, so it actually was almost completely a non-issue. Um, anyway, so to the canopy, uh, it really does go on fairly easily. You have to, uh, like I said, get it aligned, and then when the when the time comes, uh, you use the Sika stuff, and then it's got a activator you rub on all the mating surfaces, and then a primer that you rub on the mating surfaces, and then finally the uh, actual Sika goop. And it's uh, easy to work with. It's not like the Pro Seal. Works just like a silicone caulking or something like that. But it smells like cake batter, so that's exciting. Um, <clears throat> so what I did to kind of, let's see, how do I film this? To kind of secure the mounting on the back side of the rivets, I uh, got these washers that are eighth inch inner diameter hole and uh, maybe a half inch or so outer diameter. So it gives a, a good grip surface. Um, the manual mentions like a retaining strip or something like that. My kit didn't come with one and uh, I'm not sure if the kits normally do or if mine wasn't packed right, but when I talked to the factory, they kind of gave the suggestion of either fabricating a strip or using washers. And you can see the rivets actually kind of go up underneath where the, the lip is. Um, so the washers is really the only option because what I had to do was take a Dremel. Let's see if I can get a close up here of one. Where's one? So what I ended up doing was Dremeling out, where's my finger? A little bit of the foam in between so that the washer could slide up. And it's just a very, maybe the, you know, the thickness of the washer is all I cut out of there just so the washer could slide up and then the, the rivet could get through the washer and get a nice bite on that canopy just to prevent any cracking or any kind of uh, um, pull through from the washer because the fiberglass maybe can't hold it as tightly. So yeah, overall it kind of went, went together pretty nice. I've still got a couple of Clicos holding it together up here. I guess there's a a plate that goes on the outside here to uh, reinforce the antenna further. And uh, I'm waiting on that as well. But yep, both sides of the skins riveted together, no problem. I have not yet drilled out this back rib because you see how bad these are. And um, they said I can drill this out to up to 4.8 millimeters. <clears throat> to make a meet, but actually on some of these where there's completely no hole, I might actually just drill that through it at the uh, 3.2 millimeters and uh, just shoot a rivet there. And there's probably a, a hole over here or something, but uh, we'll see after I drill it how it looks. So all in all, it's been a, a fun week. A lot of pre preparation over the last couple weeks and then Finally, um, getting things done today or this week. So I've got the parachute cables bolted up here. Um, 
the rear ones, just a, a heads up to anybody building, um, the cable can't slide into its kind of groove here because of this top rivet head there on both sides. And so I was able to get that one in by drilling out this top rivet here and um, then slide the, the, the cable in and I'll rivet it back up later. Um, but the, the AN6 bolts weren't included in my kit or at least I can't find them right now. So I'm gonna have to order some of those. All right, moving along to the engine. Um, this was super easy. Um, all it required was, you know, uh, these are the, the lift points for the engine here um, in the Rotax manual. And so you just basically use a small length of chain with some of these uh, removable links and just slide it, slide it through. And then I got a cheap lift from uh, Arbor Freight here. Let's see. Um, and that thing lifted it up no problem and it holds it nice and still while you have time to work. And so you get the, the engine mount bolts here. And it's interesting actually, these two um, rubber pieces are identical. They look identical, they're identical in size, uh, but they're different hardnesses. So watch out for that. Um, basically what's happening is on the top, the harder one is on the back. And on the bottom, the harder one is in the front because the engine, when it's just rest at rest, is kind of making this kind of moment. So it's gonna pull harder there and push harder there. So I kind of thought that was a pretty interesting part of the part of the process because you know, when the engine is probably at its greatest stress point is maybe on takeoff or climb out and it's probably equally pulling out and yet that's still the configuration. Um, but that's what it says in the manual. So I trust that it's accurate. Um, I got word from the factory that these bolts need to be torqued to 38 Newton meters, which anybody who's done any torquing, that's a lot of torque. Um, the problem with that is down here, can I get in there? I'm at, there it is. I'm at only maybe like 15 Newton meters of torque and I just started to contact the uh, exhaust there. I guess it's part of the turbo. Uh, maybe not, whatever it is. Part of the exhaust in there uh, with that bolt. And so I'm gonna have to ask the factory again about that torque value because I imagine that if you torque it to 38 Newton meters, these guys are gonna be just completely smashed. So, but anyway, and uh, I was kinda, kinda hoping that it would work out because I wanna put on my, my uh, intercooler and everything over here, the air box and everything, cause I think that this stuff will start to uh, look pretty cool pretty quick here. I think it'll go together quickly. Um, I'm going to start the avionics, get, get everything kind of planned out this weekend. I've got a, a, a friend who, um, is pretty f familiar with that kind of wiring. And so I think he's going to give me a hand on it, which will be super helpful. Um, also I've got another friend who's been coming by and giving me some assistance here in the shop with various things. And one of the things is we started filling the rivets. Um, and so the process that we've been using that's been working fairly well is <clears throat> just these little syringes. Um, you get them on Amazon, they're really cheap. I think they're like, you know, 20 cents a piece. I actually got these from CVS. They gave them to me for free at the pharmacy. Um, so if you wanna save eight dollars on your build i guess you can go get some free ones from the pharmacy as well as these little uh cutoff tips and so these are 14 gauge i think that this is the the right solution we started with 18 gauge they fit into the uh the three millimeter rivets better but 
when you're using this super fill stuff, which I would recommend because it's so lightweight. I mean, compared to Bondo, this stuff is, it weighs nothing. And um, this stuff doesn't really go through the 18 gauge. Um, the 14 gauge needle, it flows much better. Um, and the 14 gauge fits perfectly in the four millimeter rivet holes, a little bit of slop so you can see what you're doing. And, uh, and it fits, it's almost the exact diameter of the, the 3.2 millimeter rivets. So it still gets in there, it still gets the job done. Um, I don't know, maybe something in the middle of 16 gauge might be slightly better for these, but um, that's, uh, that's my advice. So yeah, this, this stuff is great. Easy to work with once you figure it out. These guys are, you know, like $7 for a hundred pack on Amazon. These, same thing, super cheap. Um, and then the advantage of this over something, uh, another guy recommended using a, uh, uh, like a, like a food, um, whatever marinator stabber thing that injects the, the flavor into uh, meat. Um, but the advantage of these over that is you can just throw it away. So it starts to harden up and dry out. You just throw it away. It's so cheap anyway that it's no big deal. So we did get a lot of that done. Um, a lot of this, it's really hard to see, but a lot of the, uh, the, the right wing is done. The top of the right wing, a lot of it is done. Uh, the entire vertical stabilizer is ready. The entire horizontal stabilizer is ready. Um, now time to move on to the rudder, the elevator, the left wing, finish the right wing. Um, the whole front of the plane is done. So yeah, that's, that's coming along quickly. And, uh, for those who are interested or watched my last week's video, I did manage to get, uh, I can't really see. Hopefully that's showing it. I did manage to get those rib nuts in. Actually, it was less of an issue than I was worried it might have been. All I did was pull off this rib and uh, I drilled out these right when I discovered it. So it was already done. And um, <clears throat> then that piece can actually kind of flex and bend enough so I could just get my regular tools up and through the, uh, the bottom there. So thank you to everybody who offered suggestions and helpful pointers on that. Um, it's all taken care of now. And so, uh, yeah, I wish I didn't have to go home right now. I, I've been cranking along and I'm ready to keep going. So hopefully I can come in this weekend or get started again next week. So also one last thing is uh, the baggage door. It, uh, it The hinge comes slightly too long, so you have to cut it to length. Um, that's really easy, obviously, just a Dremel cutoff tool or a, an angle grinder, and uh, it comes not drilled. So all I did to do that was I started on the, the door portion and drilled out one end and then the other end, made sure it was straight, and then you can, uh, then I did one in the middle, and then you kind of fill it in. Uh, that part was really easy, and then... Uh, you get the door, you set it in here, and it's not pre-bent, so you have to bend it yourself. The manual gives you kind of where to mark out this line, and then all you do is just kind of work it over your knee along that line, and you know, you go really slow, put it on, check it, go really slow, put it on, check it, one very tiny, tiny bit at a time, and eventually you get it so it's perfect. So yeah, I think that's it for this week. Um, hope everybody has a good weekend and uh, I'll be back next week.